Hello and welcome to the weekly football review show with myself, Gav Mack, Alex Osborne and Flo, Flo Wolfram. How's it going? We've got a crazy midweek one going on here and um, it's it's not to be, well, it's not something that we normally expect. They call it English week in, in, in Germany, I believe. Is that right, Flo? That's absolutely true. And English weeks are the weeks we love most in uh, German football. <laughs> We, like, I don't know. We just call them because um, uh, because we believe in you in England. You you play all the time. You know, you play over Christmas. You play during the weeks. You have like the Monday matches. Uh, I don't know Tuesday, Thursday matches. I don't know. So somehow it developed that it's called English Week. Domestically, <laughs> I think it's only Thursday that we just do not touch. But every other day, you know, I, I loved it when Friday night football was on, and things like that. Oh, I absolutely buzzed it, and like that was that was something that was brought in not too long ago in the Premier League, and but. Um, yeah, we like it. It's normally a pokal week um, when there's midweek football. Is that right, Flo? Yeah, that's true. Pokal or as a cup or a Champions League or Europa League, stuff like that. Excellent stuff. But um, yeah, Flo, very much um, appreciate you joining us again. It's two at top, the weekly football review show, as I said, with myself, Gab Mack, Alex Osborne and Flo Wolfram. We haven't got Flo for very long, so... Uh, we are going to have to break down a couple of games relatively quickly. We'll start with what what we like to call it in Britain as the classic, but I believe that it's not the the most appreciative name over in Germany. Is that right? Well, uh, definitely among the fans, it's not such an appreciated name because if you say it in German, you say der Klassiker, and that sounds like I don't know. That sounds weird. You know, you have a Clasico in in Spain which sounds kind of majestic, sounds really good, sounds like good football, but their Classica sounds a little like it's a uh, crippled brother or something like that. I don't know. A bit too uh, robust. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> like German is not, not a nice la- language or not a magnificent language. Oh, I'm a big, yeah, big fan of German, you know that anyway, but um, I'll yeah, see I where you're coming from. I'm not going to lie. I do definitely see where you're coming from. So before the game, you know, it could have gone either way. We're thinking that, you know, Bayern Munich, they've come off the, the back of COVID and looked pretty good. But it's still the top two in the league at the time anyway. So before the game, what were your thoughts on it? Um, I kind of thought that Bayern might be able to use the um, development in the matches after COVID-19 so that the away, away teams kind of win more of the games. Because the the gelbe wand, the yellow wall in Dortmund is is so massive and such a can be such a big uh, factor in a match. And now where they aren't there, I saw only little chances for Dortmund to win. To win, if you remember, especially the last matches Dortmund had to play in Munich. Mm-hmm. I thought maybe um, for me Bayern Munich was the favorite to win that match, as it had come. Very true. Now the goal, it wasn't the, the it wasn't it wasn't the most unorthodox finish, but it was also a very clever finish from Joshua Kimmich. He doesn't really tend to score many goals, does he, Josh Kimmich? No, he's rather the player who uh, who works for the team, who's quite intelligent. In Germany, he's seen a little bit as the next Philip Lahm, kind of something like this. Started as a fullback and now develops more and more to the centre midfield. Mm-hmm. And he has he has a great mentality, so he's everywhere he's seen as future captain of Bayern Munich and future captain of the German national team. And the way he plays at the moment or in the past years, I strongly believe that he can he can make his way into that direction. But uh, he's also an honest kind of player. And after the match, he uh, he said that he didn't or wouldn't have scored the goal without the help of his coach in advance because in the team meeting before the match. He was especially told that uh, from Hansi Flick that Roman Berkey is standing very often very far away from his own goal. So he said he just tried to chip the ball and uh, got lucky that it went in. Yeah, very true. Now, there was an opportunity for a potential equaliser with a shot, which, while well, we been watching it live, it just deflected as far as I was concerned and went out for a corner. But we look back and it appeared to come off the arm of, of Jerome Boateng. When you first saw that, did you think it was a penalty? I was really wondering why there wasn't any kind of VAR because when I saw it live, it just seemed to be like I don't know he touched his shoulder or his head or something like that. That was my missus. That's okay. Thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then I saw the replay, and 
watching that replay it was kind of a clear penalty for me because he had like his arm outside his elbow outside and if you remember i don't know like penalties given like in champions league final last year tottenham against liverpool that penalty was not that clear as it was yesterday so i was wondering that the referee didn't even watch it on the var station in the stadium I did, what's I your opinion that, well when i first saw it i thought hey, it's just a deflection but i felt that the corner was taken too quickly by Dortmund. I think they were trying to rush the game to try and get back onto level terms too quickly. I think if they had just held fire for another five seconds, maybe even less than that, that would have allowed VAR to have a look at that again because the first replay also didn't look like it, in my opinion anyway, it didn't look like it at all. But it's when you see the second replay from the ball behind the goal, it's like, oh, admit, that's come off his arm. But by that time, as I said, the corner had been taken and you can't go back once the once the game's restarted. What did you, what, what were your thoughts on it, Alex? Exactly the same. Um we 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 were me and you were zooming, weren't we? Well when I say zooming, we were having a zoom chat. We we had the same reaction. We was like, oh Harlan's missed a bit of a golden chance there because Boateng had slipped over. And then as soon as we saw the second replay as you mentioned, we both went, hang on a sec. And uh I but from what I can remember, as soon as they showed that second replay, they then cut back to the live feed and Dortmund were literally taking the corner, weren't they? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, yeah, they did, didn't really leave, leave enough time for VAR, though I would have uh, potentially have liked to have thought that they would, it, they'd be seeing the replay at the same time that we were seeing the replay in the VAR box. So they could have like sh- tried to sh- like tell the referee to stop play uh, and allow... Obviously, if, if they'd taken the corner and kicked it, he could have put the whistle box and balls in the air. But no, 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 no. As soon as the balls, as soon as the game's restarted, you cannot go back. So if the ball's in the air, that's it. That 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 situation is dead. So I think um, they made a rod for their own back. Now they're seven points behind uh, behind Bayern. I don't think there was much chance of them being caught up anyway. But that's the title over now, isn't it? Yeah, it definitely is over. Bayern is just too. Too clever, too experienced, and too good to uh, to give away the title. And Dortmund should, at least for a couple of next matches, should take their way backwards to secure the Champions League uh, ranks to get their least um, aim in the season. Well, it's really disappointing if we got the, the transfers in summer and especially in winter with Jan and Haaland. They really improved the team. And now they seem they don't seem to be competitive with Bayern. Because so. we were talking, um, I think that was in our sort of like little Zoom chatty thing that we were having, because they mentioned on the commentary about Bayern having the strongest squad in Europe, and I I I have to agree. I think they've got strength in every single position. Put it this way, their defence, as we were speaking yesterday, their defence isn't even played to their strength because Alaba. Is not a left back. Uh, is, is a centre back. Sorry, not, uh, is a left back, not a centre back. Um, they've got Hernandez on the bench, who's a natural centre back. They've got Alfonso Davies, who's really a striker. Joshua Kimmich is a right back, who's now playing centre mid. You know, so would you say that Bayern have got the strongest squad, not just in the Bundesliga but in world football? I would not say that they have the strongest squad in world football. Who but say I would say. As I'm a kind of Liverpool fan, I, I would say Liverpool maybe at the moment because they're, they're extremely balanced. They remind me of Bayern Munich like seven years ago when Bayern Munich won the treble and the years passed it, they had the strongest squad from my opinion because like with the both, with the heavy speed on the wings, with a good striker in the middle, uh, great midfield, fantastic centre-backs, great goalkeeper, that's everything Bayern had back then, mm-hmm. Liverpool has now. And now Bayern are developing again to to that strength because they have with, with Nabi, with Coman, maybe next year with Sané, who knows? They will get some strong wings again. They improve their uh, their centre backs, and maybe they will come to that level again. But I think Bayern Munich is a team which could beat every team in a final in Europe for sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, maybe also in two games. But, yeah, uh, over two matches. For sure. Yeah, like the four or five teams which where the, the form of the day decides who, who wins today and, and who not like with, or maybe Real Madrid, Barcelona, Liverpool, maybe Juventus, Turin, something like that, those five, I would say. 
could be. I'd throw Man City into that bottom. mix as well. Yeah, I, I, see, I wouldn't throw Man City in because their their back line. I don't trust their defence, but uh, that that's a different sh- story for a different show, maybe. Um, Flo, while we've got you, I, I need to ask what happened. Um, Bayer Leverkusen won Wolfsburg four. Uh, the goals from Prong Grasic. He, he scored a couple. Um, Max Arnold um, and, and and Stefan, who's shorter than me, scoring a header at the far post. And there was a goal from uh, Baumgartlinger. Before the game, I know you were your Leverkusen through and through, but I, I, I pinned my hopes on, on Leverkusen winning this game. Where did it go wrong? Before Flo, before Flo says, I'll probably take responsibility for this because I've bet on Leverkusen to win. So I'll take responsibility. Uh, that would be my fault. If, if you bet uh, your team lose, <laughs> some, what is it? <laughs> okay. I, I don't know. I think that Wolfsburg managed brilliantly to get Harvard out of the game. Harvard wasn't a factor at all today mm-hmm. or yesterday. And... Peter Boss seemed not to be able to react to that. So he couldn't give any impulses from the outside to the team. The team seemed to be a little bit lost without Harvard. And that is uh, definitely a point that needs to be improved until the next game because you can't be so reliable on one player. Mm -hmm. Especially not if you have so many talented and uh, gifted players in your team. Like Bailey, I don't know, DRB, Bellarabi, Demirbay, I could name a lot of them. Well, they, they started with Darren Bay, uh, uh, Bellarabi, and Havertz as well as as Diaby. So I felt that because in in the in the first couple of games, Bellarabi was on the bench, wasn't he? And he was coming on to try and influence the game. Yeah. But they started with him because I felt that in the first two games since the since the restart, that he's deserved a position in the side. Do you think that they? They sort of crammed it too much up there, rather than trying to 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 mix it up and move it around a little bit. Yeah, I was a little wondered because uh, Bellarabi didn't start in Bremen; he started in started in Gladbach, and now he started again. And Leon Bailey didn't start a single match, mm. so I don't know what's going on in, in the training sessions. But usually they they uh, switch all the time, so I was wondering that Bailey didn't start for in the third time consecutive game so um, yeah maybe you should switch a little more the team but uh, I believe that the, the biggest mistake was uh, in the players heads you know you have in Leverkusen you've sometimes or it it appears that sometimes the players are I don't know, a little too fast to satisfied with themselves mm-hmm. you, know, you have the, you have a great streak you uh, won the first two games after Corona you have a match at home and you say okay it's it's gonna be going well we have, I don't know, Leverkusen conceded nearly as many goals as uh, Wolfsburg even shot so far in the season. So Wolfsburg <laughs> didn't seem to be that, <laughs> that, that dangerous, obviously. Maybe they weren't there with 100%. I don't know. This is uh, the only reason I can explain it. I was looking at Leverkusen, the way they, were, they, they sort of opened the game. They looked very much in control, but they were really struggling to deal with the counter-attack and there was a few chances before the first goal came along bef- that they could have actually scored from. I did actually feel sorry for uh, for Leverkusen with the with the free kick. It was Max Arnold's free kick which was which was deflected but I, th- I thought that the yellow card and the free kick for handball were both really harsh. Did you what were your thoughts on that Alex? Yes, the same. I, I remember we were talking about it, weren't we? And we were like, oh, that... I think we both made a bit of a big deal out of it. We didn't feel like it was... Comparing it to the one earlier with Boateng, as Flo mentioned, you saw him on the replay clearly move his arm out towards the ball's path, whereas this one, he kind of did... OK, he turned his back, and the, uh, I, I don't know for those who have played football, you're always taught never turn your back, always try and keep your eyes on the ball. But he did turn his back slightly, and he's had his arm sort of tucked into him like here, and it's hit, it, to kind of hit him here, isn't it, on the sort of like the back elbow? Mm. And for the referee to then give a free kick and the yellow card, I thought was... 
it's pretty it's savage. Yeah, it's, yeah. It, I, I mean, I thought it was a very generous free kick to begin with, but a yellow card as well was that was yeah, uh, that was a bit baffling to me. And it's a shame because you can't actually, you can't rescind yellow cards. Yellow cards, no. and once they're given, that that's done. That's a that's a FIFA, UEFA guideline. So but it's such a struggle. On that it's funny as well talking about ha- on the half turn because that's how the deflection came. It was Hamlet who the ball deflected off, wasn't it? He kind of kind of half turned his body in the wall, and yeah. uh, it deflected off his foot. Maybe if he'd have not half turned and he'd been sort of head on to the play, the ball would have come off the front part of his foot and it would have just gone back rather than going in. You know, so maybe that's a lesson for for people trying to uh, youngsters certainly and also have hurts himself we'll be looking deeper into the fixtures later on today but before Flo goes I just want to get the fixture list up for the weekend and um, where are they Leverkusen they are away on Friday to Freiburg do you think that they'll be able to bounce back happily against that uh, like, um, it's, it's quite a strong. It's not a strong in terms of clientele, Freiburg side. It's more of a strong in terms of mentality, Freiburg side. Do you think that they'll be able to have it in them to, to, to overcome the defeat? Uh, well, as as great as it is for fans to come to Freiburg for an away match because the city is great and the people are great and you have always good weather there, great beer and wine. And I could talk hours and hours about uh, the the events of the city and the fans, but uh, it's as hard to play against uh, Freiburg as the city is great because you know this, the pitch is smaller. They 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 have special pitch, you know, with a special. Uh, uh, I don't know. I like the word. They are allowed specially for the, the single ones who have the only ones who have, uh, have special allowment or are allowed mm-hmm. specially to play with that pitch in, in in the Bundesliga, and that will change when they get into the new stadium in what in next year. So the, the pitch is tough. The players they have mentality. You know they are always running and fighting for their lives. And it is a team which is uh, worse than most of the teams in the Bundesliga. Uh, if you look at the techniques and the players, but they are maybe the best team at all. So individually they're all worse than the others, but as a team they are always great. And that's the, the five box spirit. You know they such a mentality. Isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Hey, Flo, it's been great having you on the show again, as always. It was great again for me. You are you are an hour ahead of us, so it's way past your bedtime. I know you got work in the morning (laughs) for sure. So um, we will catch up again at the weekend, Flo. And uh, in the meantime, um, well, yeah, thanks a lot, Alex. Um, We will talk about some more games. See you guys. Have Take fun. care, Flo. Yeah. Good to see you, pal. All the best. Take care, Flo. See you the weekend, mate. See you on Sunday. I do, I do, I do like Flo. Is such a great guy. Yeah, me guy. too. Um, he is. Is um. It's, it's great to get a perspective from from a German point of view as well. Yeah, uh, because feel... we can sit there and watch German football all day. Well, that's it. I mean, I never, I didn't have any idea about the Der Klassiker. I didn't realise that was not that was a frowned upon. Um, what the the terminology right. of it? Yeah, terminology no, nor did I right, until right. today. I, I really yeah. didn't. I, the Classico has always been, you know, what we say it's always been. It's always Bayern Munich, and because at one point it was Bayern Munich and Schalke, which caused a bit of beef because Schalke and Dortmund have, they've got a lot of beef with right. their rivalry. Yeah. But Schalke were the number two side for a long time. So, excuse me, we're going to be joined by Adam Harrell later on in the show. There's one game that I want to talk about, and um, I say I want to talk about it. I don't necessarily want to talk about it because I don't really think. Well, Alex, you could actually tell me what happened. Augsburg versus Paderborn. Oh, please don't. Um, <laughs> that was the one of I don't and I don't want to be hyperbolic here, but that was one of the worst games of football I have ever watched. Put it this <laughs> way: the, the highlight of this game was um, the fact that there's this guy called Jasala who picked up his 15th yellow card of the Bundesliga season, which is only the third time this has ever happened in Bundesliga history, behind a guy called Schittel, yes, Schittel, um, who's got the record at 16 yellow cards, and also Stefan Effenberg. Stefan Effenberg did love a yellow card. 
he, he once picked up 15 yellow cards in the season. But that was the sum total of what happened in this game. So, and I'm not, and I'm not, and I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. That was what happened. That was it. That's brilliant. So we can move swiftly on from that game. Well, neither side, it, they just cancelled, basically they just cancelled each other out. Uh, neither side looked like they had any kind of potent attacking force or in any creative ideas. You could tell from about, uh, I mean, I picked up the game after about eight minutes and I, uh, three minutes in, I was like, oh God, this is going to be I think you already knew that after the eight, like, yeah. the eight minutes that you didn't yeah. miss, that you didn't actually miss anything. Um, no. That roundup has worked out perfectly because we have it literally has. just been joined by Adam the Greek Aaron. Oh, there he is. Look at his handsome beard. Peace up. Hey, How are you, my friend? You all right? Welcome to the yeah, show. Good. Hello. I've got it the wrong way round. I've got it the wrong way round. Where is it? <laughs> Where is it? How are you anyway, Adam? Tell me about your game. You've been watching the game this evening. Tell me about that. It's actually uh, had a lot of... Uh, there was a lot of things going on in this game. It was a massive game. Uh, Dusseldorf started the day in 16th. Um, they could have gone with a win, a point uh, just behind Mainz. Uh, and they've, they've had a lot of draws recently from uh, from what I've been reading. Uh, Schalke, who've only won one game since January, uh, and they've I think they've only scored one goal, and that was the goal they scored today. Uh, they could have gone seventh, though, within a point of sixth place uh, with a win today. Um, it was, for the first half, it, this game was a game of two halves. There's the only way to describe it, really, without being too cliche. Uh, I didn't see a shot on target until the 12th minute, uh, and then I didn't see a real actual chance until the 32nd minute. Uh, Kalajuri, who the commentators seem to really like and were bigging up, uh, he, he's 32 years old. Uh, he's a winger, uh, and he hit the ball straight at the goalkeeper as the only real chance of the first half, to be honest. And it was, it was pretty horrendous. I, I think I might have put in the group chat that I wanted to throw myself out the window at that point. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, think, I think you got you guys got a little bit got a little bit jealous of the games that I was was paying a lot of attention to, weren't you? <laughs> it was worth waiting out for because the second half was a lot better. There was just no runs from midfield. There was nothing going on. Schalke sat deep for the majority of the half, allowed the pressure to build, and then were trying to hit him on the break. But Schalke offered nothing really going forward, and it was just it was a really horrible first half. Although saying that. Start of the second half, they came flying out of the box and created a chance on the left-hand side. It ended up with the, being in the box towards John Joe Kenny, who you probably don't want your clear-cut chance to fall to. And he's <laughs> <it that way. laughs> I can think of better right-backs in Merseyside. Put it that way. I, I certainly uh, John Flanagan springs to mind. Uh, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> Schalke, Schalke came out uh, swinging in the second half and I thought that's a lot better and it was a lot more evocative of what we saw with Wagner's Huddersfield uh, while he was in England but um, yeah Schalke there was a lot of space uh, for Schalke players going forward and that led to a cynical foul on the uh, top left hand corner of the box about 30 yards out ball was swung in uh, and uh, Weston McKenney USA international mm -hmm. uh, Really bodied his defender and bullet headed the ball past the keeper for 1 0. I like that. Himself. Bodied his defender. I like that. Bodied, I like absolutely. That. The defender, yeah. when he watches that back, he wants to pull his pants up because it was awful. He just came <laughs> flying through the back uh, and won the ball out. You know, in, yeah, keeper can't really do anything about it. The defender's got, must do better, must do better defensively. Uh, following on from that, Dusseldorf were. They were very patient and uh, not something that I can say about, here comes my mandatory Leeds reference, Uwe Rodgers' time as manager of Leeds United. Uh, <laughs> there was a lot of patience. There's always a link. There's always, there's always a link. I was wondering uh, why you uh, chose this game to watch more than any other, uh, any other game. Uh, Ex-Huddersfield manager, ex-Leeds manager. We'll go with that. Uh, yeah. Call it a Yorkshire derby <laughs> in the northwest of Germany. Um, now... <laughs> Uh, Dusseldorf was still forcing corners uh, and they were very patient about the way they played their game and I think that was the idea for them was just try and get the ball up to uh, Hennings who isn't the tallest attacker in the world but very much in a vein of maybe uh, I'd say closest comparison from what I saw today was a Giroud so holding the ball up really well trying to bring the wingers into play and they were forcing corners and some of them were well worked short corners where they were getting shots off in the first half but the first corner that Dusseldorf had they in the second half they swung it into the box there was a nightmare as Schalke tried to defend it um, ended up going out of the box and then Dusseldorf forced a free kick absolutely 
bodied the free kick towards the top corner. Keeper, he makes a good save, but it's not a good save because the ball goes straight up in the air. You've either got to tip it over or tip it wide. Mm-hmm. And Hayden Hennings comes in and muscles his man and, and scores a header in his, in his empty net. You've got to say, again, from a defender, must do better. Uh, so 1-1. Um, you're looking at that point there. So... Schalke continue to concede corners. They sat deep again. At that point, you think maybe push up the pitch. You know, it's 1-1. You know, you can try and win the game somehow. Their attackers weren't really doing anything in the game. They couldn't get out of this, you know, the, set, the middle third. Um, so Dusseldorf, confidence. They, you know, they play a short corner again. The ball then gets crossed as the Schalke players try to move out. The ball gets headed across the goal. And then... Um, Caruman comes in at the Caruman, back post. Yeah. yeah, heads into an empty net and it's 2-1. At that point there, Schalke, they just they didn't really have any ideas. They tried to play a higher line at that point. At that point there, Dusseldorf, they sit back and they try and counter. And it happened quite a few times. I think the, the defender, I think he, I think it's Asane, uh, the defender. Yeah, I'd like him. Yeah, yeah we like him. He's, he's, he's big. He's trying to bring the ball out too much. And then he was try, he tried a couple of dives to win free kicks. The ref wasn't having any of it. The referee was a, was a bit of a funny one, dishing out a couple of cynical yellow cards and didn't really need to I didn't think the game wasn't really bubbling over or anything crazy like that it was it was an odd game uh, and at that point Dusseldorf looked really comfortable uh, so what have I put here two changes from Schalke going into the uh, 70 and 80th minute Bergschaler came off there were big chat about him before the game did they, do they bring kids on again so they brought in uh, young Turkish international Ahmed Kutucu who scored 36 mm-hmm. goals for me in my Leeds FIFA career mode to help me secure promotions to the Premier League <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, it just it, it, appeared, it appeared to me uh, that the role, rolling the dice, just hoping for something to happen, and it, it just didn't really happen. They they weren't moving the ball well enough from midfield, and uh, I put I put here. There's a player that plays for them called uh, where is he? Uh, Suat Serda, who I've seen a little bit yeah, of. Serda, yeah, yeah I've not heard of him. Yeah, he can play with industry and he can play going forward as well. And you know his movement in midfield was there was just nothing for Schalke today, and that, you know three losses since coming back from lockdown has put them in a, you know, not trouble, they're not getting relegated, but, you know, for a team that a lot of chat about financial issues in the background, you know, they need European football because if it doesn't happen, they're going to have to sell their assets and they're going to be left with kids and, you know, you don't win anything with kids. So, yeah, it's not looking good true. for them. Yeah, that, not just you don't win anything with kids, you don't win anything with David Wagner as your manager either, it seems. And I wouldn't, I, I, w- I would agree with that. And, you know, some managers, they get a chance in a different country and they go on and do really well. You know, you, you look at Solskjaer in England, it ended up going, nearly getting Cardiff relegated from the championship, went to Mulder, obviously, like did really, really well. He's now in charge of Manchester United. And, you know, he's not doing a terrible job there, but, you know, David Wagner, you know, being Jurgen Klopp's best mate isn't really enough, to be honest. So, mm. yeah. Did you get a chance to watch the Frankfurt Freiburg game yesterday? Uh, I didn't get a chance. I, I went back to work as of Monday. Uh, I still haven't had a haircut, but I'm back at work, so I'm happy. What's but a I didn't get a chance to watch it. Pardon? What's a haircut? The, the, well, it looks to me, Gav, like the mop might be coming back, so you might see me with a headband on again soon. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm not taking my hat off anytime soon. Um, no. Did you, yeah, um, yeah, I, I didn't know if you wanted to stay with us or not. That's what, that's what I was sort of getting at. Well, I'm back at work at 6am, so I'm going to chip out on this one. But all I'll say about this is the standout players were Hennings uh, and uh, Eric Tommy, who's on loan from... I like Eric Tommy. Yeah, Eric Tommy, yeah he, he was working the corners really well and he looked like a mature performance from him. So if it's going to happen for him in his career, it's got to happen now. He's 25. He's not scored enough goals, but he is a winger, so he's not necessarily expected to do that. But he'll probably be... if you know, I, I can see... Those, if they do get relegated to Dusseldorf, then I can see those players, Hennings and Tommy, staying in, in, in the Bundesliga or at least moving on to another top-tier club somewhere else in Europe. They're definitely not worth to be down there at the bottom of the league. They, they, look, they look good. I mean, and they've not lost a game since coming back from lockdown. They drew 0-0 with Paderborn and they conceded two goals in the last six minutes to draw with Cologne at the weekend. Mm-hmm. So that, you know, you, you look at that situation, they could be out of the relegation zone if they don't ship them two goals after today. And, you know, I think there are worse teams in the league. Ros- Rosler's done a good job. He's steadied the ship, but they just can't seem to get over the line in games. They draw a lot of games, but, you know, they did the job today. They played to their strengths and Schalke allowed, definitely allowed them to play for their strengths. I don't know about this weekend. They've got Bayern Munich on Saturday. So, yeah. you know, I think without being too disrespectful to Dusseldorf and, and Rosler and the boys there, they've got a it's damage limitation. You know, put yourself in a good position in the games going forward. I'm not sure what their remaining fixtures are, but you, you hope for Dusseldorf because, you know, again, you want to see a team, you know, play to their strengths and they did. And Wagner, 
if they if they carry on as they are, Schalke, Wagner won't be there next year, but Schalke are in trouble. They keep rolling the dice on new managers. They've changed managers a lot in the last few years and it's not working for them. So they, mm. they need they need something to stick very quickly or it's they're in big trouble. They're on relegation form at the minute. Mm. Absolutely, man. That was great analysis, that was. Yeah, really appreciate it. Cheers, <laughs> it's over there. Uh, thanks for thanks for joining us for a hot minute, Adam, and we'll catch up very, very soon. Well, I wouldn't mind following up with the Bayern and Dusseldorf game this weekend because at least now I know some Dusseldorf players. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> See you Good Sunday boy. then, pal. <laughs> correspondence from now on. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll cover the game from yesterday. It, it, I just want to just have a couple of points whilst you're uh, getting a few things sorted there, Gav. I mean, um, I think, yeah, Bayern have won the title now. They are the strongest team, clearly, in, in Germany. I'm not sure if they are the strongest team in Europe. I know that they've handled uh, a couple of English sides in the... Uh, well, they certainly went on the way to handling Chelsea in the Premier League. Uh, in the, and they gave Spurs a pasting, didn't they? But I still fancy the top two in England to beat them over... A, uh, certainly over a one game and over two legs. And... I don't know about Real Madrid and Barcelona. Maybe they probably, probably that way or that way. Okay. Um. So. Um. So basically, uh, I I still feel that Bayern. Again, they're, they're they're back on the way up, aren't they? They're on the way up, but I still don't think they're the strongest team in Europe. What I will say is Dortmund's tactics, I thought, were quite questionable. They didn't really seem to go for it. They kept three centre-backs on the pitch, even when they were 1-0 down. And I felt like they could have sacrificed one of those centre-backs for uh, for a more forward-thinking player. I was very disappointed in the fact that they took Julian Brandt off and they didn't take off De Hood and, uh, and then they are taking off De- uh, Delaney. That confused me a hell of a lot because Delaney can do that job where he just sits in, in front of the back four or, or, or in the front of a back three, can sit between and allow more Hakimi and Guerrero making moves. It didn't work. Yeah. Here's the other thing as well, when you, when you take off centre-half as well, it signals the intensity of the team and it pushes everybody further forward. And I'll use the example of when I was watching Mines versus Cologne on the first first weekend back. When when Mines went, yeah, Mines went 2-0 down, everyone just pu- pushed forward like 10, 15 yards and they got back to the game 2-0. Now, granted, Dortmund might have conceded more. However... I believe the uh, title, if there's if there's on level on points, is, is decided it's by head to head. head. Yeah, it's head to head. You've got to go out and try and win that, whether you lose one nil or three nil. If you if you're not, getting, almost felt like Barber and Bar- uh, Barcelona, Barber and Dortmund just kind of gave it's, up. It's like a damage limitation. I don't believe in that. You can't. Yeah, you're right. You, when it's when it's head to head, you can't afford for that to happen. So you might as well just go out there and just do what you can and try and get a result. It's a cup game. Uh, so that, that was my thoughts on that. Leverkusen, that was just a complete shock to me. Yeah, that was, uh, a, shamble, that was a shambles from Leverkusen. Um, and then Friday. <laughs> so I, I met me and uh, when I was watching it yesterday, there were three games, three games that were on TV, and we decided to watch the game, I think it was, where it was the game. I can't remember which game was it was nil nil, uh, and it ended what, up finishing that, the nil nil game yesterday. I was actually going to move on to that game anyway, so it sort of like worked out quite nicely. Um, Werder Bremen versus Borussia Mönchengladbach. That's the one because we were, I think yeah, there was a bit of confusion as to whether to watch this game or the Leverkusen game because of the way that the, the, the style of football that. Um, Gladbach play and the style of football that Leverkusen play it's so easy on the eye it's like which one do you choose and the the, the Werder Bremen game it's very quickly this analysis it was tosh it was it was, it was really bad and I mean we, we we decided watching the Leverkusen game didn't we and then when that game kind of was put to bed almost, we, we went over to the Werder Bremen game to watch Marcus Turam, especially from uh, one of the people who lives in this house here with me. He, he has a bit of a... And then he got taken he off. Got taken off. He got taken off. Yeah. It was, over and it, was, um, 
And then what all that meant is that this game say, didn't really have much to it. We then missed the thriller that happened over in Freiburg, late goals and a late Yes, action. we did miss that thriller. So let's talk about that game. So that's uh, Eintracht Frankfurt 3, Freiburg 3. And as we were speaking with, with, uh, with Flo earlier on today about Freiburg, man for man, they're pretty terrible, but their heart and their desire is top three top four very much like greece from euro 2004 yes oh do you know what that's a great analogy that is absolutely brilliant well the game started off with grifo uh, vicenzo grifo with a lovely um top bins chippy shotty thing into the top right hand corner made it one nil um andre silva with a header from a, after a commander shot which was meters out yards out if he missed that it was just showed even more of a fraud uh, uh, than he is already. That made it one apiece. 2-1 uh, was was Peterson's header from a free kick. 3-1 Grifo's three ball. That found Hermer. But then, shocking defence from, from from Robin Kosh. Uh, that made it 3-2. And only a couple of minutes later, Timothy Chandler, you know, at the far post, he, 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 shook, he, shook, he shook off his man and there he goes, 3-1. Oh, it is three to it's three three. Sorry, there's no reason why Freiburg should have thrown that lead away other than poor, poor defending. And they could have actually lost the game because seconds after the restart, Frankfurt were on the attack again and almost made it four three. They really did. It was uh, having a look back at the highlights, it was as if Freiburg, like kind of in comparison to uh, they let they let they let their mentality go for the last 10 15 minutes there thinking that they had the game won and turned into Aston Villa this year and all of a sudden five Frankfurt just came storming back and um this is not the first time we've now seen I think it's what the third time in as many weeks now we've seen a team be up two goals and get pegged back straight like with goals being fired in, in quick succession. So, in the first game, then um, I think Cologne then did it to, oh, I can't remember who they cloned did it to, but they, they did it where they scored late on. Uh, and then Frankfurt. They, Dusseldorf. Yeah, they did, Dusseldorf. Dusseldorf. They did it to Dusseldorf. Yeah, that's it. And then Frankfurt did it yesterday. It, it, uh, it goes to show that, uh, inside the Premier League, that uh, German sides, even though if you're down a couple of goals, you have to keep playing to the end. It's, so, it's such teams. a never say die attitude oh. in Bundesliga football. And this is why I say, and I've said it way before going back and saying, oh, it's the Bundesliga. It's the first league back. Let's just watch it and talk about it. I've been, I've been loving Bundesliga football for a number of years. And it's things like this. Why I can't get enough of it. There are some games which are pretty tosh, but put it this way. We won't, no disrespect to these sides of the Premier League, but if it's Super Sunday and it's Norwich versus Bournemouth, we're not going to run and watch this game, are we? But if it's Hoffenheim versus Cologne, I'm interested. And I'd rather watch Hoffenheim versus Cologne than I would, not just because of what happened today, because there's a there's been a few bits of bobs that happened in that game, which is absolutely brilliant. But um, yeah, Frankfurt three, uh, Freiburg three. I'm just going to get um, a little image of the, uh, of the table as it stands, um, or I won't, because oh yeah, oh, there we go. There was a little uh, technical glitch there, but we're fine. So the uh, the table as it shows, uh, Frankfurt. And uh, and Freiburg, they're 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 well in to try and um, well, Freiburg in particular, try and get a little bit of a uh, European action. They're only four points shy of uh, of of Wolfsburg, who are in sixth spot at the moment. And um, Frankfurt, for how much heart and desire they have, they're only two points above Dusseldorf in the in the relegation playoff position. So it's. The, the table doesn't really sh prove a point at the moment. Schalke, you know, Schalke are currently ninth. Do you have a game in hand against Bremen, though, it looks like? 
Yes, there is a yeah. Frankfurt are due to play Bremen. They were meant to play um, at the time of the old um, the old COVID. Our, our pal, our pal COVID. Um, so yeah, that's 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 due to that. That would be due to to be played. But Bremen, they're not doing too well. Yes, they got a result at the weekend, and you know they got they got a point yesterday, four points from a possible. Uh, out of a possible six when they were destined to lose both of those games. So that could buoy them. That could get them out of the area. Paderborn, I feel for them because they've got great heart. They've got great spirit, but they're just... From what I've seen, not much quality though. Exactly. That's where they're lacking. They don't have any quality. Um, one game... Yes, let's talk about that game here. Um, uh, Union Berlin won. Mainz won and the opening goal came from Baku it was a ball across goal and there was just it just missed everybody um, Barrero's ball literally just just there was no attacker no defender got on the end of it straight across the 18 yard box and Baku was there to finish that off and that was 1-0 and then a free kick um, it wasn't great uh, the goal, the goalkeeper decided to move vastly to his left, even though he set his wall up. He didn't need to move to his left, and he moved way before the kick was actually taken, which makes it even worse. So it was easy for the attacker, Ingvarsson, just to lob it into the far corner. Which you could say actually is a bit of a theme for this these last rounds because there's been a couple of keeper errors. Uh, one which we'll, I suppose we'll get on to very shortly in the Leipzig game, but mm-hmm. also the Dortmund game, Berkey could have done a lot better with that chip and apparently uh, Hansi had, been, had drilled it into the Munich players saying that uh, he was into some bad positions, so if you are in a position to shoot, do try and... Do it, try and chip it. Which, which would explain why he didn't really have a look at the position of the goalkeeper when he did have it there. So, yeah, these, these these last couple of games, the goalkeepers haven't exactly showered themselves in a lot of glory. No, I agree. Um, Andrik got sent off for a second yellow um, for Union Berlin and uh, Schotterbach's header on the 90th minute could have won the game for them, but it did finish one apiece there. Um, and then, yeah, let's talk about Leipzig uh, before we go to the final game of the of game day 28 of English week in the in the Bundesliga and that was yeah Leipzig 2 Hertha Berlin 2 um before the game you would automatically say this is a Leipzig win Hertha are renowned for playing terribly away from home but I don't know if it's just the the lack of fans situation but they looked the stronger side for periods of this game. They, um, I think it was during this match, the uh, commentary team mentioned that out of the 22 games that have been played up until that point, only three had resulted in home wins. Well, so, we, 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 did, we looked at that for the weekend show, didn't we? So yeah. we can argue that two up top got in there before everyone got on this bandwagon of, oh, away teams are doing this and doing that. We, we we outlined that, didn't we, on um on 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 Sunday's show. But you're right, it's just well, before before this evening's games, there's a very small amount of of, of away wins. However, Berlin her to Berlin, they're just they're a very home driven side. And I've noticed that from my time when I was living there, from my time looking at Looking at her term as as a club because I, I I knew a few names. This is when they had a uh, Beatsovich playing for them. When they had um, who else playing for um, Sa- Sam and Callow, who's still there? Ex Chelsea, you know. Um, there's been a few players that have played for played for Hertz Berlin over the, over the years that are that are names, but away from home they just struggle. They really stepped up today. Well, um, maybe the players that the, the, an explanation for their poor form is uh, away form, should we say, is maybe their players get quite intimidated by surroundings, especially when it's full of fans. 
home team. Now, when it, when when that has been removed and it's now just down to players against players, and you you can hear your coach's instructions clearly, and you know may, maybe they there's not much mental car- uh, mental strength in, in in that regard, but they're able to. Um, thrive in the current situation and, and I'm now starting to wonder um, when it comes to Premier, uh, the La Liga when that comes back if that's going to follow suit with the away teams having much more success uh, when that comes back um, and then eventually when the Premier League comes back if, if it does which I think I think pretty much is not mm. if that con- if the trend continues there as well because especially when it comes to the relegation battle. And interesting tidbit, I know other people might not find it an interesting tidbit, but Liverpool are on a long unbeaten home run as well. And there's some players who play, who play in for Liverpool currently who haven't actually lost a home game for them. Mane being one of them. If, if this trend continues and Liverpool lose a game, they're not going to be particularly happy you have to lose that proud record. Um because of the fans not being in the uh, in the stadium, and we all know that Liverpool fans are trying to make it quite uh, an intimidating place to go sometimes. Um, but going back to this to, to this game here, uh, I, I thought Hertha were quite well set up for Leipzig, and I honestly I thought it was kind of going for a stalemate because it looked like both sides had kind of cancelled each other out. He had a couple of set piece goals. Um, a nice little volley from uh, Gruwich, who's on loan from Liverpool, funny enough. That's right. And, uh, I mean, Leipzig, uh, Nagelsmann will be quite disappointed in their failure to deal with the ball, kind of allowed it to dro- almost drop in the middle of the six-yard box, almost. Uh, and uh, Gruwich volleyed home. And then Nkunku, with a great outswinging for, uh, corner kick, put it in the spot really where only Klosterman could get it and head it. And what head that was. That Solid. Because um, he was in front of the near post. And we know those headers can be quite difficult to try and judge weight, how much angle you have to put it on to get it into the goal. And um, no one at the no one on the mark in the back post for uh, Pertha meant that the ball went in off the inside of the post and, uh, and went in there. So maybe that's a thing to think of going forward. I know a lot of professional teams don't really mark the posts uh, a not, lot. Yeah, anymore. not anymore, yeah. Um, uh, but I thought it was after that, I thought they were going to be a bit of a stalemate because they seemed to cancel each other out. And yeah, then... exactly. Hasenberg got himself sent off um, just after the hour mark and you're thinking, yeah. well, going by record, it's going to be the away side that are going to go on and run off and, and uh, into the hills. But um, Patrick Schick, uh he, he found a way of, of, of finding the back of the net. Um, <laughs> as you, as I've alluded to, if this was a different country, namely Italy, you would be screaming match fixing here because the keeper has had an absolute howler here. I'm surprised First, that it's gone down as a shit goal. Um, yeah, I think it might go down as an oggy. I think it will. I think that might go to the dubious goals panel. Um, and yeah. um, a player that we both like, um, Christian Piertek, who was down to go to many, many different clubs, somehow found his way at Hertha and um, scored the penalty to equalise. Daily reminder that he signed for Hertha Berlin game. Piotek. Literally, I'll forget, and then we'll come to the weekend's games and be like, oh, yeah, they've got Piontek. Same with them. Uh, but, yeah, so, about that Patrick Schick, before we move on, it's, for those that haven't seen it, he, he's ta- he's got the ball, the ball kind of falls to him at the edge of the area, and he's taken a shot. It's gone fairly straight at the keeper, as the keeper has gone down to save it. The ball's kind of gone through, If for those who are watching on YouTube, he's kind of dived to his left, and the ball's come through his arms because there's a bit of a gap there it's hit him in the face and then as the ball's kind of rebounded his arms have gone backwards and they've just literally just it's almost as if he's thrown the ball into the back of the net and it was a comedy of errors it's it's a shocking goal to give away um see because uh luke adamola lukeman that was a definitely a tackle from a wide forward because he got himself in such a poor position. He, got, he was squared up 
Uh, he wasn't uh, in a good position to defend. Uh, I can't remember who your man's name was, who he tackled. I think it was Kunye. Or was it, it Kunye? Kunde. Uh, Kunde, that's no, it. Yeah. No, no, no. Um, Kunde plays at Thingy. Uh, I, can't, I, can't, I, can't, sorry, yeah. I can't remember his name, but um, he, he got himself in such a poor position. And uh, when he was squared up, he just lunged out. And it was the, the attacker was like, oh, thank you very much. I think I'll fall over your leg and get yourself a penalty. And there wasn't too much um, complaints there. Not, it, was an, it was awful. That is one of those tackles that you would do on the halfway line to stop an attack. Yeah. You don't do that sort of tackle in your yeah. box. You're, you're protecting your league. Yeah, you take a tactical foul. Yeah, but when it's in the penalty area, oh my word, that was. Nagels I know will have, rightly, will have um, a few words to talk to him about that. They will indeed. And the final game that we're going to be talking about, Hoffenheim 3, Cologne 1. Now, um, for people that don't really know about two up top, we have a number of presenters that, as you'll see, you'll see myself, you'll see Alex, you'll see Steve Buck, you'll see, um, you know, you see Flo, you'll see Adam the Greek. But there's also people that work behind the scenes as well. And we were trying to allocate a game each to watch. And everybody went off and watched their own games and things like that. And I ended up having two games on the go. I had the Union Berlin versus Mainz game. And I had the Hoffenheim versus Cologne. And thank you very much for the little ballot that allowed me to have Hoffenheim versus Cologne. So the game finished. Uh, the game finished 3-1 uh, with goals from Baumgartner. He scored a brace. Um, Zuber scored as well. And Kainz got one back. But there's also two red cards. A couple of VAR decisions as well. Baumgartner's first goal. Baumgart- I keep calling it Baumgartner. It's not, it's Baumgartner. Baumgartner is elsewhere. Um, Baumgartner, um, it was a spin from Larson. Um, it's only the fifth goal that uh, that uh, he scored this season at the time. It was like, it was beautiful. It was absolutely lovely. Um, and then there was more drama going on. So after 33 minutes, um, I've got everything going on here. Sorry, it's not 33 minutes. Number um, 26 minutes. Burnout um, got sent off. Was it a sending off? Oh, God, yeah. So, um, when you see the challenge in real time, it's like, oh, that guy looked very pretty. I think this is no no disrespect because at the end of the day, it was Dr. Felix Brick who was in the middle of this and now he is one of the best referees in Europe, if not the world. Um, so, by far the best German referee. But, it all happened so quickly. So the challenges come in and it's a collision. You think, oh yeah, that's a yellow card. It's gone to VAR and it, it, you come back and his, his his studs have caught him literally between the tip and fib. Um, that, if I'm surprised that he was able to walk again after it. When you see it again, it's one of the worst tackles without an injury. I've seen, uh, yeah. So rightfully, went over to VAR um, and said, "Got rescinded. Red card was given." Um, and then, despite that, Cologne went on a bit of a break, and they were enjoying lots of passages of play, lots of passing. They went on a move which involved about twenty, thirty passes, which were, had a shot uh, in the end from Rech Bahai which just went wide. It was really unfortunate. And then the shot from Jacobs was cleared off the line. It was all going down. And then just before half-time, Baumgartner thought he made it 2-0. When you watch it in real time, it's like, mate, he's miles offside waiting, but why don't you put the flag up? But the ball was actually played to Dalbor, who was... He was much tighter than you think. So therefore, even though he scored at that point, they brought it back. Uh, and it was half time and you think that was a nice little end into that first half but it's I can't see the intensity going to that level well I'm finishing off my my beverage outside and um, I look in the window seeing the telly box and it's 2-0 and <laughs> we, we haven't even paid, played 20 seconds in the second half properly the the the, uh, the presenters hadn't even in- reintroduced the commentary team back to to the game. That's how quickly it happened, and um, it was a header which were, which Mere tried to try to clear off the line, but it it already crossed the line by a country mile. And then minutes later, Baumgartner, lovely toes, literally is is 
he's got his back to goal on the edge of the box in line with the with the D and he's sort of done like this weird back heel turn thing and found Zuba and it's 3-0 so you think oh it's game over but then there was more drama <laughs> because then then Hubner had a collision, which I felt really I felt really sorry for him because he didn't mean it. He really he mistimed his jump, but he collided, he collided with the attacker from from Cologne. He'd already been on the yellow card. Brick took his time, and then thought, "Yeah, I'm going to have to give you a second yellow." So off. off within the first five minutes of this second half. Yeah, that was on 51 minutes when that happened. So from Baumgartner's header to that, that was that was literally six minutes. Um, Kainz made it 3-1 with um, it was long ball that was deflected. Uh, it was long ball that was sent over and it was deflected shot, which made it um, which made it 3-1. And then there was a penalty shout. I was like, nah, I don't think it is. It goes to VAR. And then, yeah, Penalty was given, and Mark Oot, who's had a hand in every goal, every uh, a goal at least in every game for the last X amount of games, is thinking, "Right, well, I'm going to take his penalty," and he uh, fluffs his lines. Terrible penalty, and um, ended three one. Really good game of football. Um, going to run through the fixes very quickly because we are way beyond time. Um, so Friday night. Um, we got Freiburg versus Leipzig. Um, Leipzig Freiburg versus Leverkusen. Um, Saturday afternoon, we got Wolfsburg versus Frankfurt. Hertha versus Augsburg. Mainz versus Hoffenheim. Uh, Schalke versus Bremen. And the Saturday night game is Bayern versus Dusseldorf. Um, the lunchtime game on Sunday is Mönchengladbach versus Union Berlin. Uh, the evening game is Paderborn versus Dortmund. And we'll be back on the air at seven o'clock um, with the usual team to break through all those games and then give a little preview on the Cologne versus Leipzig game, uh, which will be played on uh, Monday night. So that's what we've got going on there. And uh, and yeah, so what's going on here? What's going on? Right, so um, I am just putting this social media links uh, underneath so everybody can see those so you've got your Twitter page uh, you've got your Facebook you've got your Instagram and your YouTube and you make sure you tune in to every single thing that we do all those social media links will cover our t- um, five minute field show that we do every Thursday our, our weekend shows that we do uh, Every single show, you'll be able to follow us on any social media platform and everything will be advertised for you to see. But um, from myself and Alex, thank you and good night.